Hi everyone, welcome to number 812,063 live stream mix fix from Pure Mix coming to you live, hence the live stream name, from Flux Studios in New York City. Today is a little bit of a different vibe and that is because um, I am doing this basically by myself. We do have Tom and Andrew back there, but they're not doing anything. I'm driving everything for this live stream so that we can do more live streams without having to have a three hour setup and stuff. So something breaks, just scream in the comments and Tom will read them and then scream at me and we'll do a screaming circle kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, this is how we're going to do live stream now if this works, it should be fun. Uh, one of the added benefits is that I'm in charge so I can do things like this. Let's see. <laughs> And that makes me very happy. Okay, cool. What are we going to do today? Today we're going to mix a song by, well, finish the mix of a song by someone named Nick Buffer, who's a Pure Mix Pro member. And the song is called King of Hollywood. And I have here on the desktop, watch me doing picture in picture. Um, I have here the folder that Nick sent us. And there's a rough mix, a multi-track folder with wet and dry stems. And there is a little doc. And the doc says about, I use Universal Audio Apollo Twin. Good choice. I sang the voice through a Rode NT1. Mm -hmm. Recorded the bass through the Apollo Twin only. Okay. Got a friend, record drums, session musician. I played some guitars, but used Musiversal to record the rest of the guitars. I don't know what that is. Uh, and then there's a reference track and then his email. And the reference track is... The reference track is not going to play it because otherwise it's going to get shut down. John Mayer. Okay, got it. Cool. Um, this is enough information for us to get started. Uh, we're going to, and uh, what I want to do today is I'm going to do an ultra bare bones, super simple, no template, no complications, like try to get to the core of the matter as fast as possible uh, in a mix fix matter more than a, like, you know, going through everything matter. Um, and since um, we are here, I'm going to get all the stems, drop them into the Pro Tools, that is. And I'm going to create a master failure just because you never know what might happen. Like this. And um, how about I put decibel on the master fader? There you go. Decibel right here. I'm going to get my preset that I like. Uh, that one. I did that one and I'm going to assign that to my desk pad, which check it out. Check it out. You can see over there. That's my iPad with um, decibel on it. Cool. So let's get back to Pro Tools and um, everything's assigned. Everything is in a weird order, but we're going to attend to that in a second. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put mix up on the master and I'm going to create a new thing. What's the file format? Okay. Like this, we're going to create a new track and I'm going to drag and drop the rough mix from the folder that Nick sent us. Uh, we don't know if it's rough, the mix, maybe it's not rough. Maybe it's a great mix. And then I'm going to have a really hard time making it better. Is, let's go here and mix fix number eight nine nine number nine number nine bum it, number nine and we're gonna call this the version call them nix mix I like the alliteration upload cool so we are here and now we're gonna be able to have this for our ref great Next, it's churning. Let me um, go here and listen to the music. It's right with the gypsy girl who sold. Never 
met someone with a silver tongue and rope worn scarf. Like shadows in a funeral pyre You want it all But you've already come and gone You expect me to fall While the king of Hollywood Plans another escape Stole a dance in a downtown department store. Cool. And then I imagine it um, repeats because it is pop music. Okay, I get totally what they're trying to do. And the mix is pretty good. But maybe, just maybe, maybe we can make it a little better. Let's see. Um, so I heard something. Did you hear this, guys? the song during the song there's also the rainforest I do not know what that is it's pretty noisy it shouldn't be this noisy especially since it's been gated so either during export or uh, I don't know at one point something got really really noisy and if you check this out um, remove the solo Mother noise. Fortunately, we have the noise, so uh, we're going to use our trusted isotone spectral denoise stuff. I'm using the audio suite plugin. I click learn, I learn the noise. And now, if I press play, the noise is gone. Awesome. So, I'm going to use this model to just first, I'm going to duplicate all playlists to, in case I need to go back. And then I'm just going to select everything and denoise the hell out of it, uh, render. And yes, that's okay. Why not? Nobody's going to get hurt. I'm not going to get hurt. Maybe Nick is going to hurt me. We'll see. Uh, but I trust that Nick is a civilized human being who is not going to hurt me. It's going to take a second. It's doing the floor tone right now. The kick and everything. Let me use my new power. I think that Isotope is amazing. Wait, amazing. <laughs> so cool. It's nice. All right, what can I talk to you about uh, while this is rendering? Well, several things. Let me click this button here. Um, well, this song is going to end up on Pure Mix, and you'll be able to have the stems, and you'll be able to do your own mix of it which is what we do every month-ish with Mixpix. One of you guys sends us songs and has the courage to uh, let it be uh, get naked in front of thousands of people. I open it, I mix it, and then, uh, and then we put it on Pure Mix and you're able to download the stems and you're able to follow the video or not um, and do your own mix. We're about 50% done. And this is on an M2 laptop. Uh, what else can I talk to you about? Uh, on this session, I'm going to use mostly the plugins, as much as possible, the plugins from the PureMix plugin suite, which are the plugins that you get if you're a PureMix Pro member. And um, in those plugins, we have the 1178 from Pulsar. We have our own Sugar and uh, Spice Rack, Decibel, MixUp, also the Eventide SP2016, Metadyne, um, essential and there's one more that I'm forgetting somebody's gonna get really pissed at me but that's okay because we're almost done rendering that noise out of those tracks and why did I do the duplicate playlist thing I did that because maybe this noise or the noise is too heavy on one of the tracks then I'll be able to revert and re-render and I won't have to feel like I've uh, messed up 
there you go and here we go picture and picture again okay cool let's press play what happened hmm. very odd hold on one second oh yes um, I should have done it one by one the pressure of time annoyed me let me change that here I'll, I'll do it again later when we grow up once we have something else to talk about for now we're going to mix with the noise and uh, don't try this at home folks we're a trained professional here so uh tom room overheads kick floor i imagine on the tom snare triggers must be drums let's give them some color so that we know where they are here to the left cool and then but we do love isotope this is, has nothing to do with isotope this is human error um there you go the bass and a bunch of guitars so lead i think is a guitar yes so that's a guitar round here and we have an arpeggio which is also a guitar comes only on the second verse another arpeggio right here and uh, arpeggio over lead back what is that vocals cool move them here cool bass duplicate okay color lead very very well recorded guitars and double voice for the chorus that's back on vocal rhythm guitar right here cool and guitar B rhythm, so these hang. Lead, I imagine that's a solo. I have an animation. There you go. Main voice, hello. Let's put this here. And there's a lead guitar, the solo, and the impo uh, intro right there. I'm gonna go here with that. And I see that the rhythm guitar is here the whole time. And we have a muted guitar that takes over right after. There you go. All right, so we are now in order. Let's not forget to save. Let's do a save as, and call it 1.0. Here we go. Cool. First thing I'm gonna do is check out the vocal. Shed a coat, watch her set the room on fire. Yo. Okay, noted. This is why we have a fader. Um, what I'm going to do actually to control that without dealing with uh, issues, I'm going to run everybody through a new aux, which I'm going to call Mix Bus. And that's going to be like this. And I'm going to put this ball on it. No, actually, I can do. Because in Pro Tools, uh, this fader right here on the master is, is um, pre-plugged. And you got to be careful about that. OK, so I'm going to take it down 6 dBs. And that should be fine. Let's see if there's more complaints. Ready, come and go. Expect me to fall. We'll see in a second. There's a little bit of a delay. That's the joy of the internet. All right, let's move this stuff around. Kick, snare. Here we go. Um, are we good? No complaints. I'll take it as a yes. Um, let's see what happens here. 6 dB is down, still pretty loud. If I could bring myself up, I would do it on a daily basis. No, I cannot. I, you know what? I can. Check this out. High tech. You, you want to see this. This is, this is, these are the tools that are at disposal. So this is my thing. And I have a screwdriver. And I can go in here and turn myself up a little bit. 
this is very old school fader screwdriver into a little thingy let's see if this is better and if not i'll bring the music down again it took me a while to figure out how to get that microphone louder i gotta be honest with you okay so come again okay so i'll just bring the music down another another three we at minus 9 dBs. Okay, cool. Um, the left overhead is very loud. It's about, um, but we'll have to keep a note of that. That's what I just saw. We'll figure it out. All right. Vocal. Close the door, shed a coat, watch her set the room on fire. It's a calm with the storms while the flames dance like shadows in a funeral pyre. You want it all. I think it sounds great. Um, it has a little bit of a resonance at the very bottom. I'm um, sorry, I'm still learning my job here, poof. Uh, has a little uh, resonance at the bottom, which I'm gonna get rid of. Close the door, shed a coat, watch her set the room on fire. It's a calm with the storms while the flames dance like shadows in a funeral pyre. A funeral. Close the door, shed Little compressed. But we'll man, we'll man. The room on fire. Next phrase. It's a calm with a storm. Funeral pyre. Funeral pyre. Word before. Then a funeral pyre. No. Then a funeral pyre. Go further. Then a funeral pyre. Okay, that's better. That's a good basis. It's a little compressed, Nick. A little compressed. But I think in the gist of it, it's going to be okay. Close the door, shed a coat, watch. Door gets tucked. Yeah, that's the by byproduct. Close the door, shed a coat, watch her set the room on. Duplicate. Thing, uh, the two of them together. Shape this sound. Ampeg. Since that's the vibe, um, like the classic tends to be right for this. Together, not compresses it but kind of like condenses it and then maybe we'll do a little bit of uh, shelter in place here with the uh, new version of the 160 they just put out on the UA spark thing All right, so let's see that and the vocal. Well, let's mute everything else so we don't have to get aggressed by everything. 
There you go. And here we go. And here we go. Close the door, shed a coat, watch her set the room on fire. It's a calm with the storms while the flames dance like shadows in a... Cool. Close the door, shed a coat, watch her set the room on fire. It's a calm with the storms while the flames dance like shadows in a funeral pyre. A little, um, a little real for Friday night, that vocal. So I'm going to try to put a little bit of the 800 um, on it to soften it. Close the door, shed a coat, watch her set the room on fire. It's a calm with the storms while the flames dance like shadows in a funeral pyre. Uh, without the 800? It's a calm with the storms while the flames... It's a... with the th all that the little transients. It's a calm with the storms while the flames dance... It's a calm with the storms while the flames dance like shadows in a funeral pyre. Of it if you went to 7.5. It's a calm with the storms while the flames dance like shadows in a funeral pyre. You want it all, but you've already come and gone. You expect me to fall while the king of Hollywood plans another escape. Little smoke stole a dance in a downtown department store. Well recorded, but it feels a little too real. All right, the gain on the microphone is a little slow, sorry. Um, I'll try and be better about it. It's a calm with the storms while the flames dance like shadows in a funeral pyre. You want it. So I put the 800 to try and give a little more texture and vibe to that guitar. Little distortion never hurt anyone. It's a calm with the storms while the flames dance like shadows in a funeral pyre. You want it all, but you've already come and gone. You expect me to fall while the. All right, um, we have a basic sound stage that works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a mix bus thing and I'm going to use the Rock Hoopel uh, because that's the plugin we just released and it's phenomenal as a um, very new on the mix bus. It's a calm with the storms while the flames dance like shadows in a funeral pyre. You want it all. You've already come and gone. You expect me to fall. Sorry, cool. And I want to use Spice Rack. Actually, I have all my plugins right here. Check it out. Uh, I'm going to put Spice Rack on the mix bus, and I have this little preset that I really dig. Um, that may or may not be here. Mix bus grid. There you go. I made this. And it uses that spice rack is linear phase to be able to tuck in a little bit of saturation from the tube thing under the mix. And it sounds like this. So this is without. It's a calm with the storms while the flames dance like shadows in a funeral pyre. With. It's a calm 
home with the storms while the flames dance like shadows in a funeral pyre. You want it all, it all, but you've already come and gone. You expect me to fall while the king of Hollywood plans another escape. nice obviously uh decibels freaking out because the mix is done in the socks because i don't want to hit you with 9 db's extra level but it's okay we'll live without um this is the kind of stuff we're going to figure out for the next all solo live stream all right so um what else where were we before i rudely interrupted ourselves with a air horn here let's go and see what happens with this basic vibe if we add the drums it's a ride with a gypsy girl who sold broken hearts let's put all the drums into a folder uh, or a Actually, yeah, let's pack them into a folder. No more oxes. New folder. Let's call it something smart like drums and make it a routing folder and route all the tracks to it. Okay. Gypsy girl who sold broken hearts. She That one was kind of cool. Let's um, take advantage of it. I should denoise this. But Is this one we have the patience for that right so we're talking about the overheads let's go to the end and uh, figure out what's going on here is le noisy let's go to isotope and I am sure it's one of those like console emulation plugins or something that got added over and over and over again when Nick made the stems. Um, let's play it. Cool. Now it's learned it and let's listen to what it sounds like so I don't make the same mistake. Hold on. Learn it please. and now play oh it works better when you get up in learn mode ooh silence is golden into here uh, render that already did a place at the beginning ah way faster let's see what this does for us so if I go back to the beginning where I was. The noise. Terrible. 
way, way better. This on the drum bus. I'll stay there so you hear what it does. It gives it a little bit of that um, kind of like togetherness, also that saturation from going through the box, which I dig. And then uh, I'm going to sugar it a little bit on the whole mix bus of the drums. All right, um, and let's uh, look into those overheads now, the uneven overheads. Oh, tracks, but they're mono content. Adjust that and uh, select the track and split into monos and uh, get rid of the stuff we don't need and we'll do the same thing here split into monos so it will take the track that's a stereo track and make two mono tracks out of it and i'm going to get rid of i mean hide never get rid of anything those two tracks and let's see what it wants to be as a stereo overhead let's put this one to the left and this one to the right with the discrepancy in level db difference between the two um, I think it may be useful for us to judge if it's going to be useful or not let's denoise it I'm going to go to isotope again I should have a shortcut for this I use it so much and learn render get off the learn mode While we're there, you know, is this one too? And it sounds like this. Be on the right side, but I think we'll live. I think we're going to have to rely on the room. Triggers. Let's find that out. What are triggers in this context? Okay, I'm not a fan of the triggers. if we can make this song work without the triggers we just might be able to we 
have three tom tracks. There's a rack tom, there's floor one, and there's floor two. Ooh, it's a tom fest. Make sure that I remember that. Okay. And this song like this. second one's not we, we will be fine here some love at the bottom to make it feel hello I am big Tom When all else fails, there's always our base. Obviously, uh, it's noisy, so we are going to have to do the deed. Cool. And for the other tom, I'm thinking that I'm going to have to gate it because it's not, it's not helping us. Check it out. I think that the tom sings too much uh, when the bass drum hits, so we're going to use the expander. Um, let's use a built-in one. Great. I think that's good enough. Girl who sold broken hearts. She never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scar. Suppose we give the kick and snare a little bit of a oomph oomph and by doing my classic DBX 160 um, what you call it parallel processing I guess and I'm gonna do it here so usually when I work all this is done already because I use a template but the idea today was to do everything real time to see how fast we can go Tom, do we have any questions or anything that I need to know about? Yeah. Not yet. Working on it. Okay, cool. How's everybody today? I'm having a good time. Girl who sold broken hearts. She never met someone with a silver. I will solo the drums so you hear the vibe. What else do you need? Nothing. Okay. And then we're going to do a little bit of a extra drum push thing, which I uh, shamelessly stole from my buddy Vance Powell. 
He doesn't call it that, but that's what I call it. Um, so I guess the name is mine. There you go, Vance. And it's Fato. Actually, I used to do that 812 years ago off the Titanic. Uh, that's the last thing I did, actually, when the Titanic was sinking is set up my uh, extra drum push. I'm glad I did. It allowed me to survive. And um, what I do is I do this. So I send the whole drum set into the fat zone. I stopped doing that. I don't know why. That was kind of the sound that I had for a while. And then maybe it didn't work on one song. And then I was like disgusted by it. And then I didn't do it anymore. And then I saw Vance doing the exact same thing. I was like, oh, that's right. This is awesome. So now I do it again. Hard enough. You got to hit it. Like, you mean it. So that's going to help compensate a little bit for the fact that we can't use as much of the rooms as we would like to. And with the bass. I'm going to use a little bit of sugar on the bass just because we can. Without. It's nice. I'm going to mute the vocal a little bit. So that guitar already has a space on it, but I think we could probably create our own environment. I'm going to use, ah, let's try the EMT 140. It is a crowd favorite for many, many years. And let's see what it does for this environment. I'm going to make it yellow so that we know what is what. Not the reverb itself, but the, um, the sand and the return. I made the wrong track yellow. There you go. could get, use a little bit of that. It's right with the gypsy girl who sold broken hearts. She never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scar. Let's do a little reality check with next mix. I'm going to lower the level because Otherwise, it may get hit a little hard. I don't know if I can do that in the plugins. Let's see. But, but it'll give us an idea. Actually, because of that level thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a track so we can AB. Usually, I would AB with mix up, but because we have to lower the level for you guys to not bleed from your ears while I'm working. Um, then we're going to do it this way. I'm going to create a track, call it audio track, and uh, call it, say, print. And now this will be our print. This is now. Drop King of Hollywood MP3 into the print. Like this. 
call that particular playlist Nick. And I am going to lower index mix so that I'm not chasing the level, but that I am able to compare. So I don't know if I'm gonna, I mean, let's try 9 dB, but that seems a little obscene. Let's see. It's up like this cool what is wrong with me today Nick inactive uh, da -da 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 -da. Um, so this should go to the next bus and what is wrong with me is that the oxys did not go to the mix bus because I don't have my template and thus all the default Buses were not the right bus. This is what happened. Um, yes, and now no longer sucking. too loud is this an acceptable level or is it too loud i'm asking my um, fearless assistant it's okay Because I had the, those default bus not happening and I hit the mix bus directly, the master bus directly without going through the mix bus, now I'm hitting my mix bus too hard. So the joy of this in um, Pro Tools is that you have an offset, you can do an offset with a master bus before hitting your actual thing. So if I go here and I assign this to my mix bus cable, if you will, I'm able to take that down. Just like if you had a volume knob on the cable, it's pretty, pretty bad. Decibel back on. Bus. It's right with the gypsy. This master back on so you no longer get hit so hard. Here we go. It's 
to calm with the storms while the flames dance like Let's make it even prettier. Everything is coming together. I'm starting to hear some S's on the vocal. here Mac vibe here I think if you ask me nobody asked me expect me to fall while the key in a downtown department store Shed a smile, took a bow Then comes the pain that grows of turning back into a ghost Next, now the vocal feels at the beginning that, that little resonance bothered me here we are, it's starting to fight so I think that what we're going to do is we're going to keep the resonance off but try and bring some overall broad thickness back into the vocal and maybe i don't do that next but i want you to be aware that that's on my mind um, i feel that compared to uh, next mix we're still not quite there but at least we have get gained the drums identity back this is where we are now <laughs> was at a time. Not digging that snare space it feels like a little too garagey for this kind of stuff. I think it needs to be a little more um, dreamy and, and um, have more of a presence. So this is what I chose to do. Hopefully Nick likes it. guitar is crucial counterpoint was actually on this track here's this arrangement the counterpoint is really cool like all the interplay between the guitars but this one I, the sound feels a little too bitey so I am uh, using the 800 over saturation Go. 
Okay, so we need support on the chorus for the vocal. Let's see what we have for the double here. While the king of Hollywood plans another escape. While the king of Hollywood plans another escape. And then we have the background vocals which are two background vocals in mono, but on stereo tracks, which is okay, we're not upset. This would benefit a little bit from our friends at Antares. Let me get that back. Just to be able to use them loud now let's see still no questions all right i gotta ask um boom, boom, boom. which i got the key of this a long time ago and i don't remember now so i'm using my trusty piano app boom boom <laughs> Very much D. So let's do that. Here we go. Let's not forget to put it into the mix bus, otherwise we shall regret it till the end of times. And call it backs. Here we go. lines a little bit and to do so micro shift is awesome in a downtown department store Shared a smile, took a bow Then comes the pain that grows of turning back into a ghost See what this lead is about Plans and other hearts
to do more of the noise. Because everything is coming in pretty compressed, the whole thing has a bit of a compressed vibe, which is cool. Um, that's the sound that we have to deal with and we have to make it better. But I think that maybe if I actually endorse that, what I did I am getting heavier into the rock open which is on my mix bus and I'm slowing the release down so it's not moving as fast um, and not pumping as much and it's allowing me to settle the um, the overall feel of the track a little bit however I don't think that I can function in that manner with that vocal and I if you remember at the beginning I think there was a dry there's a dry stem of the vocal let's let's look at that I'm gonna bring this in make sure it's in sync it is in sync, great. And the dry vocal sounds like this. Let's send it to the mix bus. Actually, let me do a little kitchen work here so that I don't embarrass myself again. I'm gonna go to the um, IO setup and the default output bus is gonna become here. Uh, stereo bus, mix bus, voila. So next time I make, I make a track or import a track, it'll go straight to the mix bus, not to the um, LR, and it won't embarrass me as much. It's a ride with a gypsy girl who sold broken heart. The guitar, I removed it. I think this vocal's better. It's a ride with a gypsy girl who sold broken hearts. She never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scars. Way better. So let's do a little bit of. Uh, our compression. It's a ride with a gypsy girl who sold broken hearts. She never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scars. Way better to compare. This was the, uh, the wet one. She never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scars. You know how there's a little bit of a um... A, a hole in the middle like it's boomy and um, bright it's got a good tone but I think we can we can get there without that hole she never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scars a little bit of tilt this way she never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scars hold she never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scars. She never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scars. Uh, there was a effect, uh, a delay on it, and I think we could do, we could get there by doing something like this. She never she met never someone met. with a silver tongue and wrote one scars. Close the door, shed a coat, watch her set the room on fire. Close the door, shed a coat, watch her set the room on fire. Close the door, shed a coat, watch her set the room on fire. Close the door, shed a coat, watch her set the room on fire. Close the door, shed a coat, watch her set the room on fire. Here we go. It's a ride with a gypsy girl who sold broken hearts. She never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scar. We're getting 
there. So I am I have three dB of difference between the next mix and my mix now. So Nick. She never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scar. She never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scar. Watch her set the room on fire It's a calm with the storms While the flames dance like shadows in a funeral pyre It's already pretty saturated before I feel that as a mix bus compressor here The rock hooper will be more useful to us Without the transport sound, which is really rare But that's because everything else is pretty saturated already let me um let me check this out at the beginning. the amount of um, automation I'm going to do. I'm going to do the two compressor approach on the vocal. I'll have this one here, and uh, which will be faster and catch those big things. And then the other one will just do some leveling. Close the door, shed a coat, watch her set the room on fire. Close the door, shed a coat, watch her set the room on fire. It's a with a gypsy girl who sold It's a with a gypsy girl who sold broken hearts She never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scars something for the joy of the drums because you always want the drums to have joy and to do so I like to use the um, the SP 2016 and I don't know if I have it on this machine because it's a new machine but um, I have something called undigitalize let's try that Check it out. This is without. And we're going to do the same thing on the snare. With the whole drums. Have 
have risen and I'm hitting the compressor too hard. A little bit of my favorite at the bottom just for flavor. Reversal of Fortune, that is too bright on the chorus, so I'm going to darken it. This, the lead, which I thought was going to be awesome to raise the lead, is actually making it complicated for me to hear the lead, the vocal. You want it all, but you've already come. Let's give it a different space and push it in the back.
point, I think we're going to have to have the patience to remove the noise from the tracks that are really uh, too much. And um, this guy probably, actually this I can just kill. And, but we're making progress, I think. Deal, this one. That's a big deal. So we're going to kill this. But before we kill it, we're going to isotope the hell out of it. That's a verb. I isotope, you isotope. He isotopes. Which is it? We isotope, you isotope, the isotope. That's what it's done. Okay, so I have the model my thing. We don't need to isotope this, but we do need to isotope that. That would be a good name for a movie, isotope this. All right, so this one's cool now. The guitar, the noise is all the same, so I'm just going to isotope everybody quickly. I want questions, hit it, baby. Oh, uh, man, it's, I hate it, but you should have it. Um, it's called... Oh, yeah. What is the app that I did for the piano? So I used to have a guy tone next to me, but because we have this like cool new desk and I just, I'm feeling like in a very stark kind of vibe, I don't want to have a keyboard hanging, but wait, check it out. This is awesome. But I do. Um, so often when I'm looking for a key and I don't have time to plug that in, I just use the piano app, a piano app on the phone, but I, can't, I haven't found the piano app that's not um, advertisement driven. So every time I pull the piano app, I'm like about to play a poof, an ad comes on and it pisses me off. And then I, I wait for it and then I click and then, then I found out that it's indeed. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, but good question. What else do you got? Um, because of you, because I love you. And um, because at the time when I was setting up a mix bus, I didn't have, I didn't know how loud this stuff was going to be in your ears and I didn't want to kill you because I love you. Um, but, uh, but we could absolutely put a limiter on uh, as soon as I'm done uh, isotoping the verb this. The, as you see, it's not necessary that it's a sound, right? So if I had put it in at the beginning, I would have mixed into it. It would have influenced some of my decisions. And also I could make the record loud as hell, which is not the point here. Um, but let's do it. Let, let me do a little more, a lot more of this. I'm curious to know if the noise was also on the source tracks. Let's see. <laughs> No, no noise. Maybe I was right. Let's see the backgrounds. Oh, we're gonna do that. The purpose of a limiter here would be, if you're not, how can I put this? I have the mix compressor, the raw copper, to just keep things in flux and then I slowed the release down because things are were pumping a little too much for that for my taste if we were making a you know heavy duty dance track maybe that kind of pumping would have been cool but this is not the point today and so it has to sound a little more um, natural as natural as possible but if I were to put a limiter here and we're gonna see that in a second when I'm done doing what I'm doing you will see that it does what it's supposed to do as far as a transient control. And that would be the reason to do that, is to do transient control. So I'm going to keep on doing this really quickly and talk to you to distract you from the fact that, you know, nothing's happening musically. How about those Yankees? Uh, Red Sox. I forget which one's which. Is that bad? I'm bad. I'm a bad person. Um, here we go. So what I, the mistake I made with Azotope at the beginning is I uh, forgot that I was using an uh, audio suite and used, instead of learning the noise, it just applied a broadband thing and made it, everything sound like it was coming out from uh, another room, which was not really smart. And that happens on a regular basis. This is as real as it gets, my friends. 
Okay, I think that is good for guitars. Let's see how this one sounds. <laughs> this more questions um, because I wanted to show you how to use it and it sounds like an 1178 which is a two 1176s in stereo and it has this really cool um, saturation thing which I feel sounds great so I thought it'd be nice for a change of scenery for you to see how that works um, and that's the only reason I could use whatever else and um, but it's a good sound on vocals isn't it I like it uh, let's see so let's figure out which drums still have the noise and then move on and that's uh, here we go I can't wait to talk to Nick and find out who made that noise. What, who, meaning what plugin. Is in the in the chat? Oh, so what's the plugin, Nick? Tell me. S some so one of your plugins betrayed you. I already did the overhead. And so it must be shamed in uh, in a public space. This is what we do with plugins that betray us. And the answer is not sure. The sound you may or may not hear is Tom typing furiously. Um, all right, cool. I think that we're good. Let's listen to the drums. Oh, no, I didn't do the room. Let's do the room. There you go. So this is a little bit like watching paint dry, but quite a bit louder. Here we go. And let's listen to just the drums. Let's refresh um, a memory and um, clear our palette um, with doing something stupid. Let's see this one. Here we go. It's a ride with a gypsy girl who sold broken hearts. She never met someone with Silver tongue and road one scars. Close the door, shut a coat, watch you set the room on fire. Let's put the limiter on. Let's use um, Pro L2 because it has a really cool little trick usually as you may or may not know depending on how much you watch this um i use elevate because i like the way it sounds and i like the transient control on that but this one has something really great is that if you hold um, shift i don't even know what it is it's so automatic if you hold shift then when you raise the gain it will lower the output to match so we're going to be able to hear to calm with the storms while the flames dance like shadows in a funeral pyre. The limiter does without having the level blowing our heads off. It's a calm with the storms while the flames dance like shadows in a funeral pyre. If I raise the level 5 dBs into the limiter, it brings the output 5 dBs and we can hear with and without. So let's go 
uh, let's say at the top right here So it, it basically, it's not night and day, but it does make things a little smoother uh, by taking care of those high level, more um, hard hitting transients. I mean, if you look at, let me switch, elegantly switch uh, cameras to the laptop camera, which shows you decibel over here, or you can see decibel on the screen, let's be on the screen. Um, you can see that with, um, let me put the decibel on the screen, there you go. You'll see the peak over average there is very, it's, it's just basically keeps things together a little bit. Check it out. decibel jumping right this part right here where my mouse is is the true dyne so it's a dynamic range uh, with the limit on we were able to gain and that that's may I make it sound like a positive thing at this level is a positive thing you gain two dBs of dynamic range so that allows you to fit for example if you're going for Spotify um, Spotify is at minus 14 with a minus true peak at minus one which means that you have 13 dBs of dynamic range available right now we're at 15 so that means that Spotify will bring the track down or do something unconventional or uncontrollable, definitely something against the Geneva Convention to my file. And so I don't want that. I'd rather be the one who tortures my file into being within the standards. So actually, in this case, I probably would push it one more dB and push it to six and see what that does. Does that make sense? Comment. going to fit within the realm of Spotify for example say this goes straight to Spotify and does it get mastered which you don't have to master your files if you like the way it sounds and it fits in the realm these days just publish why why have somebody else I mean unless you want somebody else's opinion or if you're not sure but uh, I think it's important and I've had this discussion a couple times this week this is why I mention it is like this this um, traditional vision of mastering that you have to master well let's think about it for a second you have to master if you need to first if you are not 100 percent sure what you're doing and you don't know how loud to deliver your track you don't know if your mix is as good as it could be you don't know if your bottom's right you don't know if you're not 100 percent in control and you don't know exactly what you're doing then yes have somebody who knows have your back great Mastering comes from um, taking a mix from tape to having to make a um, vinyl matrix out of it. Not everybody could do that in their home. Basically, nobody could do that in their home. Now, depending on the stakes and on your budget, don't let the lack of mastering prevent you from releasing music. That, that would be silly. Just make sure that you win standard within the specs and you like the way your stuff sounds. Another great advantage of mastering is um, if you're working across a record several songs in an album it's quite difficult to really um, give the polish the the overall sense of album while you're mixing on uh, working on separate tracks so it's hard enough to get the levels to be all the same 
across a song from song to song it's really difficult to really have another song in mind when you're trying to make this song sound good mastering is great for that because mastering um, you take all 10 files and you put them in your session and you can listen to them against each other and you can try and make them feel like one body of work sorry so for that that is a crucial step of mastering so these days for me depending on the artist if i'm working with an indie artist um, for example, I just worked with this band called Slogan, Slogan, S-L-O-G-A-N, French band. Really awesome writers, great producers, really tongue-in-cheek, beautiful lyrics. Love that record. They didn't have the budget to, to, to master, and I said, okay, that's fine. Let's just make sure that you're 100% happy with how the file sounds, how the music sounds, and if you're good, just upload them. So if you go to Spotify and you hear Slogan, S-L-O-G-A-N, they have two songs I did, one called Pizza Manzana and one called uh, Deja Vieux, D-E-G-A Vieux, V-I-E-U-X, I don't know how to spell in English, a French word in English. Um, and you'll see that those are straight from Pro Tools to Spotify. Also, you can hear anything by a band called Adore, A-D-O-R-E. That is straight from Ableton to Spotify. Literally, we upload the file that I finished mixing in Ableton and you can go listen to uh, Dancing While the World Burns or today, uh, of course, this, is, this video is gonna be uh, perennial, but today they released a new song called Famous that I mixed a couple weeks ago. And it's literally like, I export the file from, from um, Ableton because they work in Ableton and I have to mix in Ableton because it's too tied to Ableton for anything else. And I give it to Stelios and Stelios uploads it. And um, check out the numbers on those tracks. And they're doing very well and there is no mastering engineer it's just me mixing stereos approving we uh, and pip and we work as a team and we're like are we happy with this most of the time it's me saying no 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 give me another day give me another day i can do better and then and then we're done and we upload it so the mastering engineer is a great person to have on your team if you want a second opinion on your mix if you want somebody to uh, to make sure that it's up to standards, make sure that, you know, they know that it's minus 14, minus one, and all that stuff in, across all platforms. Um, or if you want somebody to have another pass at uh, joining a bunch of tracks together, but it is no longer an absolute requisite. It is another person you can add to your team or another step you can add to your team, uh, to your process, sorry, to make sure that the music is as good as it can be. End of rant. She never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scars. That was great to talk to you like this because it gave me a little perspective. This is starting to sound like me. Like, like I recognize if I heard this um, six months from now or a year from now, you know, when you make a lot of music, sometimes you forget you work on things. I would probably say, oh, yeah, that, sound, that would just talk to me in the way it sounds. So let's compare it with, with Nick's mix. Uh, this is where, to make sure that we're in the realm and also that we respect the production and we respect the vision. So this is Nick's mix. She never met someone with a silver tongue and wrote one scar. a little more um, oomph at the bottom and it's got it's a little hard in the mids and I usually I like to do this meaning bring a pull tech in um, either the legacy because it's all in one and I dig that or two separate pull techs an EQP and uh, an EQ5 and just enhance the bottom a little bit like 20 or 30 I don't know which one's gonna be best but we'll see a little bit of 200 for the knock and then find the spot where it feels a little kind of like head coldy it's usually between 500 and 1K. And then just tame that a little bit. Mm, I don't think it needs any more high end. I think we're good that way. Um, and the way to figure that out usually is to go to a small speaker for me. So I'm gonna to switch to my Oratone. 
but for you it's going to be the same. She never met someone with a silver tongue and road worn scars. She never met someone with a silver. She never met someone with a silver. She never met someone with a silver tongue and road worn scars. Never met someone with a silver tongue and road worn scars. Close the door, shed a coat, watch you set the room on fire. It's a calm with the storms while the flames dance, dance like shadows in a few. So I'm hearing that we need a little more sauce, for lack of a better word, on the drums. So let's try to do that. what but I'm doing something wrong let's see on the snare you do that is because you made a, um, a track instead of an aux so let's do that again I'm pretty positive that's what it was so let's go fish for that bus drum space Put it, I'm not going to put it on the whole drum because I don't want the bass drum to have that, but let's see. 12, uh -huh, 16 here. So um, that's the stereo modern room. Let's listen to the stereo vintage room. Isn't that song great? I love I love this thing. Um, let's listen to the regular vintage room. You can you can discern it more.
were 1988, but it's not. Against all odds, he's doing a very good job at um, linking things. Check it out. Love it. Let's see if it sounds good on the bass drum. And uh, let's listen to the toms. Let's see. The winner is somewhere here. This one looks like there's good tom action there. Let's put too much of it on the high tom. You want it all. Already come and gone. You expect me to fall. While the king of Hollywood plans another escape. So I'm going to bring it down. You want it all, but you've already come and gone. do this solo justice. So by itself it sounds cool, but it's too thick in the in the mess, so I'm lightening it up a little bit. Slipped. The machine is struggling a little bit to do everything it has to do. Uh, it has to do the pro tooling. Um, it has to do the uh, talking to you and all that stuff. And it has to do uh, this. <laughs> so it's struggling. <laughs> Fall. 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 
trigger track there was a trigger track and I, I um I censored it and let's try let's see if it's good for what we're trying to do uh, with that part of the problem with mix original mix is that that flat thing just uh, made his life very complicated for the snare drum so I think we're gonna mix it but there was a couple special effects like here As a Pure Mix Pro member, you have the access to UBI's drum replacer, and it will let you do things like this without all the issues that these guys run into. I do like, I don't think the, the, the snaps are necessary, but this is kind of like the whoosh. It's cool because it's not expected in this style of music, so let's do it for entertainment. And because you always want to have something that's like, whoa, Then comes the pain that grows of turning back into a ghost You want it all But you've already come and gone You expect me to fall So I feel that we are in the thread of what Nick wanted, um, but we were able to bring the energy of the drums back together and uh, create more of a space because in, in, in this is a, a standard issue. Let me uh, talk to you and yeah. Uh, this is a standard issue when mixing this kind of stuff, which I, it's, as he wrote in his first letter is iterative right so he writes the song he does the bass he sends it to his friend who does the drums and then there's uh, guitars being added and so this is music that's usually played together and when it's done in in layers like this the problem is that not everybody can hear not not every track was laid thinking of what other tracks were going to be laid right and so that it makes it so there's a whole bunch of build-up and um, it is really difficult to place the vocals on those things, um, for example. And so what I think Nick's issue was mixing is to find a sp spot with the vocal. And I, I myself, I'm still, you know, working on that and probably would be working on that for hours to, to find a spot with the vocals where it just sits right and doesn't feel like it's changing. On Nick's mix, the vocals are very loud, the drums are in the back. The reason for that is because it was difficult to place those vocals in that, in that mix because of the way it's arranged. Now. Um, it's not a qualitative thing, it's a quantitative thing, meaning you could have, I mean, this is a very reasonable amount of tracks compared to modern standards. So 
he told his story with a really healthy amount of tracks. And, um, but there's a lot of stuff that was hanging in the same spot of the arrangement. So some of the guitars, he's probably going to feel that I put that guitar too soft and I'm not featuring enough. But the real idea is what matters is, is the vocal, the guitar is decoration. And so I had to bring the guitar down, some guitars down to be able to have the vocal be up front. And that's what allowed me to get those drums to speak more than his mix. The other thing is, uh, he was struggling probably with those um, those triggers and those samples and the drums were not really clean in a way that you could really have them hit so now they they do better um, so that's that what else to improve on this I feel that and this is very important for anybody who who makes music that you want to share with the world is the way it feels time-wise all right um, it's really difficult to have a consistent pocket this drummer has a really good pocket, but I feel that the maybe the person who tr um, tracked the bass or the person who tracked the guitar may not have heard that pocket. And so it's not locking as much as it should. And so the work here would be to go and edit this track to, um, to make the pocket unified across all the tracks to get more of that kind of peaceful feel. So... We can hear the song, we can hear the arrangement, the counterpoint on the guitar is awesome. And um, all these ideas are great. But in the spirit of trying to get to another level, I would probably spend, if this were a gig that somebody called me to do, I would probably spend a half day just moving things around in the timeline to make everything feel good. There's always the option to press quantize, which I personally, it's not my vibe, but you could you could start there and then massage that but I feel that in this realm that would be a great way to improve the song would be to massage the time until it feels it flows better it would allow um, the solo to soar over a, a pocket um, a bass a rhythm section that has a, a, a serenity to it that we don't have here because not everybody played together nobody played off everybody and so there's um, different visions of what the time is and that's the that the feeling you know that feeling and that's very important i hear that a lot and i hear that a lot in the tracks that pure mix members send me because it's so intangible and so difficult to really pitch we know when something is is, is flat we know it's flat or sharp and then we put out a tune on it and, and we or metadyne and we're good cool but time Time is everything. And so on, on records like this, the focus, this is pure mix, so we're mixing. But the foc my first focus would be time, and that's how this could be um, elevated to uh, um, a Spotify-ready level. Could put, I could print this right now, and well, we'd have to run it in its entirety and see what its full dynamic range is, but I would say it's probably 12 or 13. So it's Spotify-ready. If we like the way it sounds, export. Go to CD Baby or TuneCore or whatever, and it'll be um, it'll be ready for the world to listen to. What we're gonna do instead here is I'm gonna print it, and I'm gonna put it on MixUp uh, on the MixUp thing. I'm on the wrong software, sorry. So much software, so little time. Uh, I'm gonna put it on the MixUp thread that is here that you'll be able to access, and they will have it's number nine, number nine. Um, they'll have mix mix and then it will be this mix and you'll be able to compare between the two and do your thing and the stems will be on pure mix ready to download for you to play with no later than very soon probably tomorrow or Monday and that's pretty nice my friend Tom do we have first do we know what plugin made that noise the CLA 76 come on Chris I'm sure it's a button you can turn off yes so be careful with those things when you print stamps to not have the CLA 76 or any uh, waste plugin that has the analog button on um, when you print the stamps if you're going to send them to somebody because it does that. Um, that's not just them. There's also the 800, for example. If you go here, if you look at the 800, there's a button that says noise. Mine is off because what I want from the tape is this transient saturation, not the noise. Anything else? Have you 
how do you know if you get a tonal balance right uh, since I haven't been referencing anything? That is a very good question. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure. And the reason for that is um, I sit in this chair facing these speakers an unconscionable amount of time every day. And so, and I have developed over time, because time is my friend, I have developed a pretty good oral memory, let's say it's slightly above average, which allows me to sit here and put a track and I'm like, oh, pretty much within two beats, I know where we are. That is, um, that in all honesty, that's the gig, is to have the, um, because you can go on YouTube and learn how to cue bass drum, you know, that's not the point, which by the way, we didn't cue here because it was properly recorded. Um, but what takes time is, is this bass drum useful to me on the way to my final result? If that makes sense. Uh, is this, uh, uh, is the, the, the space around the snare drum, does that make me feel the way that I want to feel listening to those lyrics with those guitars referencing that kind of music, all right? So is this something exactly like a John Mayer record? Probably not, because I don't listen to a lot of John Mayer records, and um, so it's not part of my consciousness. Does it sound like a band playing together? Yeah, I think so. That I've done a lot of, and um, John Mayer is actually... Uh, a band playing together, the, the, the records I like the most are a band playing together, so I guess that correlates. But the way I know that, that this is what it should be more or less, and the reason why I'm right and healthy percentage of the time is because of repetition. That's it. I am here every day doing this every day on these speakers every day. And which is why when I'm traveling, which I travel a lot, and I am um, not in my natural habitat or if my natural habitat changes because this room just changed as you may see it's very pretty right oh it's so pretty but it just changed and so when I sat here for the first time mixing a song in the same place the entire environment was different same speakers same desk same pro tools same moi but different room and so the, the first hour and a half of the first mix was like whoa because my standard of reference had changed because the room changed. Now, it just so happens that the room is totally fucking badass. So that's great. So it didn't take me very long to get used to it, but it was a change. So when I'm on the road, what do I do? Because I'm not in my natural habitat. So I bring something that's consistent. So I bring two things on the road. I bring these guys, which are my Medze Elites. They're obscenely expensive and incredibly wonderful. Um, and they are, they translate amazing. So I have this. So that's a constant reference. And I bring this guy. Let me see if I can do this well. I bring this guy, my little um, shallow tone. I had Oratone, um, the company. They're very nice people. They cut uh, an Oratone in, in half, not quite half, but they cut the back of it for me. And that's because I'm um, unbelievably lazy and I want to try to travel with as few things as possible and a full oratone, let me show you. Ah! A full oratone did not fit in my computer bag. So, um, so, and since I want to travel with just my computer bag and, you know, change of underwear, um, I asked very kindly, um, well, I asked, and then they were very kind, to take their one of their product and, and cut it just the size of my computer bag and put an amp in the back. So when I travel, the reason why there's another Oratone here is because that's the one I put here for clients that work here when I'm not here. Uh, that's the one I put here because this one, this little one, the shallow one, travels with me. And so I have two references that are with me at all time. They are here and they're also in LA or in Paris or wherever I go, I set these two things up. So I have the Oratone, the Elites, and then I have these guys. Which means that when I'm here, the only thing that is not my, how can I put this? Let me rephrase, do it again. Which means that I'm creating a frame of reference here, listening from the same spot to the same speakers at the same level all the time. So it's basically the, there's an absolute 
frame of mind being created by repetition. And then every day I listen to these, I listen to the orotone, I listen to the elites. So when I travel, I'm only losing one quarter of my frame of reference. And so I don't really lose it. And then sometimes I screw up. Sometimes I listen to the mix in the morning, I'm like, what was I smoking? I don't smoke, but drinking maybe, I don't know. Um, sometimes I wake up in the morning, I listen to yesterday's mix and I'm like, wow, that's pretty sad. And I come back up and fix it. But most of the time, I pretty much know where I am. Repetition is your friend. And references that are absolute, not tied necessarily to the song. So pick two or three songs that you know that you're going to learn over time. And that will be your sanity check. If you are losing your mind and you don't know what's going on and you, you deliver a mix and somebody tells you, uh, dude, where's the bass? And you listen to it and you're like it's perfectly fine and you it's so bad that you like the tension is so bad that you don't know what is what then you play one of your references one of those tracks that you know very well for me i have um i have two main ones i have uh will knox immigrant hands because i know exactly where all the bodies are buried in that song i know that um at about one minute when the bass drum hit it should be like a cliff there should be nothing sticking out it should not think sound too fat it sounds a certain way and that is in my consciousness because i've been listening to that track for 10 years i know exactly how it should sound and there's a peak at 3k on one of the words and it's a little too bright here and there's a little resonance in the bottom of the guitar there so i know those things so i know that when i play that it just puts me back exactly in the headspace of this is the absolute and then the other track is um hands to myself that's a Serban mix, um, and I also use that. Um, but actually, I can show you. Let me show you. Uh, let's go back to that, and it's called. So this is my reference uh, playlist. I, I have it on title too. The title sounds better. Uh, so Senator Gomez, hand to myself, and then Paper Tiger by Beck. That's a Nigel Godrich mix that I like very much. Um, those between those three. I can bring if if I'm tired or if I'm in a room I don't know or if I'm confused or if somebody is um, really like doubting my um, absolute absoluteness absolute them then I can play any of those three tracks and I was like oh yeah or oh you're right I'm screwing up your record so this is the answer to that question I hope I answered that question any more questions Virtual drum plugins if you don't have a studio drummer. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I don't know them enough to be able to pass judgment. I know that they're just like virtual sense, a very practical way to get to where you want to be without having to, um, you know, I mean, look, I have such amazing sense right here. And oh, let me go back here. We're talking, we're talking. I'm supposed to press this one. Hi. Uh, I have amazing synths right here and um, sometimes even though they are right here I bring out my little keyboard and I play a virtual synth because I'm in a hurry or because uh, I know the key is going to change 17 times because the client is insane whatever so there's no absolute because the digital tools have gotten so much better that um, there's you can't say oh the virtual drums they suck no they don't the sounds are cool. Um, the pockets, uh, the way they feel, I, I don't know. I haven't used them enough. I'm sure somebody came up with some engine to humanize that stuff so it doesn't feel like a, a beatbox playing acoustic drum sounds. However, I would like to advocate for something. And I'm sure they're great. I'm sure they're great. And you can uh, put some grit on them like a little bit of sugar or you could put some space and do some parallel compression to give them a little more um uh, i would say life but let's think about this for a second music is about emotion that's that's everything and i don't believe that you'll be able to get emotion out of the even incredibly well recorded and well sequenced drums you're just going to get the same thing every time 
and that thing will be its block, its rock, and then you are going to build around it. There's going to be no interaction between you and the drums or whatever. So I think that considering the times, considering that you can hire a drummer for eight bucks, okay, a hundred bucks, maybe 200 bucks, and have a musical interaction with that person, generate a relationship, generate a give and take. You got that person a gig. That person, you're now in a relationship, an exchange with this person where he provided service to you, you provided him with um, lunch money. And so that, just that exchange, means that that person looks to you as a musical and business partner and allows you that allows you to ask them to do things that a plugin will never do like what do you think of this break do you think that the four bar little um, hang spot after the first verse is worth it in this song do you guys notice it's like a four bar hang personally if i were a producer or a musician on this i would have told nick hey are you sure you need that and then that could have given nick um, pause for thought and say, uh, maybe that thing was there because there's a pickup in the vocal and you didn't really know how to do the turnaround on the chord progression without adding a full chord progression before the vocal starts again. I don't know, things like that happen a lot. So working with other humans is awesome. Every single drummer I know has their own recording setup in their house. So you can get this track done just like Nick did. He sent it to a friend of his who is a professional session drummer and did the drums in there the groove great i would say when in doubt use a human and that will make better music if you're stuck in a basement uh somewhere uh in a repurposed be basement in your parents house um or or your kid's house that could happen and um and that's where you work and you it's your passion and you don't have a network of people and you don't know a drummer and you need absolutely you want drums on this yeah man use the plugin but when you go see a band live and you like the drummer and say hey you know i'm working on this song you know do you have a whole setup at home would you record drums on my song how much would that cost i think beautiful things would come out of that more than you know torturing the plugins for hundreds of hours to make it sound human just saying just my two cents what else this is what i'm told so i think that for a first solo ish live stream we did pretty good i screwed up a bunch of stuff i wasn't as focused on the mix as i should have because i was managing all this stuff but you know what came out okay nobody died it's pretty cool so I think it's time to say, hold on, I have to find the button to turn this thing off. What am I supposed to do? Oh, thanks for watching. I have a button for that. Hold on. Press the button. Okay. I'm going to press a button and it's going to stay. Thanks for watching. And then I want to turn the, find the button that just, okay. So my friends, thanks for watching. We will be doing this again soon and it will be solo and I will no longer um, make mistakes. And uh, wait, I get one more of these. <laughs> this is for the YouTube thumbnail. Thanks for watching. <laughs>